Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. Today's webinar is presented by Sports Field Management Association. This week is the, is the fourth of our series of post-conference education. Our featured speaker today is Mark Moran, CSFM, Agricultural Horticulture Instructor at Atlee High School. Today, he will be presenting Crossing the Bridge, Working with Athletic Administration. Attendees are muted during the presentation. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature. Please type in your questions and they will be answered throughout the presentation. Thank you for joining us today. You can get started. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Once again, I'm Mark Moran. I'm at Atlee High School in Mechanicsville, Virginia. We're just northeast of Richmond. Um, so we're kind of in the transition zone. Um, my, my world every day is a high school agriculture education teacher, and I happen for the last 20 some years been teaching a two-year turf science course at the school, and our students are um, responsible for a wide variety of areas on campus. Uh, today, my, my talk is going to be crossing the bridge, working with athletic administration, and that's something we do with, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, especially as we uh, are approaching our spring season. Um, so about us, uh, 21 years as a turf science program, uh, we've been um, all the way, you know, back to 2000, 2001-ish. We've had some intro topics, but then we eventually became a full-blown two-year cor course within our comprehensive high school. I have three classes uh, currently uh, being taught, um, two introduction classes and an advanced course uh, that roughly make up about 60 students. And then we have uh, 28 acres of athletic fields uh, on campus, and that's eight uh, sports fields. Um, and then also we work with our band uh, to use some of our facilities when things are going on. We also host other events. Um, we do um, some stuff with Special Olympics. Um, depending on the year, we'll do graduation types of things. Um, but uh, the last, 18 years, I don't know what I have in that note there, but uh, 18 years as a as a high school or middle school coach, that's what I was supposed to finish writing on that slide. So I do have coaching experience. So that's a little different than than some uh, teachers in my area that I work with, but I, um, I, I spent a lot of time on the football field, seeing the mistakes that coaches make, but also dealing with athletic administration and also in, in my capacity now, uh, working with both of those uh, to make sure Everything that our kids are doing is successful, at least a noble attempt to do so. Um, so things that you know kind of put ourselves on the map. Um, these are some of our facilities. We've really gotten into the STMAs, uh, you know, stars and stripes uh, types of things. Uh, it's good PR for us. It's good promotion for the kids. They get excited about it. It's uh, exciting for our athletic administration and for the fans in the stands. So. We just play with things. Uh, we have a limited budget, uh, but we're able to be creative in how we spend our money and, and do some things. And things like these logos and, and things like this are what we consider good investments. Uh, it's good for our community to have a little bit of pride in some things. And then um, we try to give our kids the very best they can possibly have. Um, so we're a suburb of the Richmond area. Uh, we're far enough outside of town to not be close but we're close enough to not, you know, what I'm, I'm almost to say is we're close enough to be close and we're far enough to be far. So um, we we have access to town when we need it, but when we get out of town, we can be out of town. Um, but we're uh, a facility that has lacrosse, soccer. So we have four uh, lacrosse teams, two, two male teams, two female teams. Uh, we have women's uh, soccer, uh, both Barcy and JV. Uh, we have men's soccer, both Barcy and JV. We have uh, two field hockey teams uh, in the fall, uh, two football teams in the fall. And then we also uh, play host to our middle school uh, football team for, for game events. And we also run track and field and everything else. So just like everybody else, uh, just a big, big facility. We're spread out over a large space. Fortunately for us, they built things big back in the day. So one of the things that we pride ourselves on is trying to make sure our athletes have the very best possible surface they can play on. Um, so that comes with a lot of detail work, hard work, 
Um, and we're a comprehensive uh, ag program. So we not only do we teach the mechanical, we teach the agronomy, the pesticide management, all those types of things that occur just like in any other facility. So, um, so that's just kind of a quick background about who we are. Um, we all deal with nightmares, and this is where I think many of us can all say we were the same. Um, some of us have nightmares that are a little worse than others, but we all deal with problems, and the problems come, you know, from a variety of different ways. You know, it could be as simple as traffic, it could be vandalism, it could be, you know, overuse uh, because of, you know, poor planning, it could be poor construction, and in my world, it's kind of all of that. Um, so we deal with torn up gold mouths in the game season. You know, that's that's a big one. Lacrosse has created a big challenge for us over the years since they brought it on about eight, nine years ago. So we've worked really hard to try to find ways to limit the amount of damage that lacrosse does for us. But it's still, it happens. And a, a good friend of mine at a university up the road told me one year, he said, you can't stop it. You can just prepare for it. And when it's done, you have to resaw it or, or do some other tricks to help recover. But we all see this. Um, and we are in, in, by, in no stretch of the imagination perfect. Uh, as you can see from this image, we've got irrigation issues. This is a system that's hydraulic from way back in 1990s, and it's still hydraulic today. So if anybody wants a clinic on how to deal with hydraulic irrigation systems, come on out. We can show you some cool stuff, well, not so cool stuff, or scary stuff. But, you know, this is traffic on wet ground that we've dealt with, you know, ask coaches not to practice at that time in that space, yet it still happens. So those are things that kind of what we're going to talk about today is, you know, how do we, how do we deal with challenges? What creates these challenges? So, and how I've worked with my administration and also my coaches, but really the last several years, I've really tried to focus on how can I communicate with my athletic administration to help solve problems before they realize they're a problem, or if we can get in front of things before they become problems and plan accordingly, maybe we can, you know, more than, more than anything, we want to keep parents off of the athletic administration's back. Uh, we want folks to really focus on, you know, playing the game. And if our, our coaches can focus on playing the game and doing their part as coaches, then we can kind of take away some of the stresses that the modern coach has, that the coach from when I was a player uh, is different. Uh, the, the coach that I dealt with as a player was also the sports field manager, you know, all the other, the equipment manager, all these other things. And now in the more specialized world of coaching, we find that coaches just want to coach and they don't want to do the, the things that traditionally and most in my high school environments were done by coaches just as part of their job. And so we also run into situations where less coaches or teachers in a building. So because of that, they're, they're more tied to the public sector and not so much the school. And in that case, you kind of pull some responsibilities away because you don't necessarily want to run them off either. Because I think the biggest stress, one of the biggest stresses to coaches outside of players and parents is the facility and how do I deal with it? So that's where I've come, come in with our athletic administration and say, how can we make things a little bit easier for our coaches, but also hold them accountable for things that they can control? So one of the things that we, we run into are habits of coaches. And the mindset of most coaches, and I'm one of them, is that we've always done it this way. And you know, if you continue to do the things you've always done, you're always going to get what you've gotten in the past. And I'm I'm a big uh, I fall into this a lot, not only uh, in the in the classroom, but also on the field. And I have to check myself from time to time and say, how can I do it differently? How can I do it more effectively? And how can I communicate this to other people? Uh, the one of the things that I have learned, and many of us as sports field managers know. Um, we understand agronomy, they understand athletics, many of us understand athletics, but we know for a fact that rare is a, a situation that a coach truly understands agronomy. They don't understand the why we do what we do when we do it. 
And I think that's a that's a key area that most athletic administrators administrators struggle with as well. Um, so one of the things that you can do is be a better teacher. It's not be a better sports field manager, it's be a better teacher. How can you communicate what you're trying to do in a way that an athletic administrator or even a coach can understand what it is you're trying to accomplish? And if you can educate them, at least they put you on a level playing field as somebody who's an expert. And if you just go in and tell them what you want to do, they it's a little different. The, the results that you get are sometimes challenging and sometimes not what you're intending. Um, the other thing is look at what your goals are and what are their goals. You know, I, I run into it a lot with coaches from time to time where they talk to me about what they want. And I'm, the first thing I'll ask them is, have you spoken to the athletic director? Or as a group of coaches, have you put together a plan to bring this to the athletic administration? Because they're they're dealing with a lot of things and maybe your critical situation at that very moment is not high on their priority list. But if you have a team of coaches who have a collective vision for what your facility, what your fields need to be, then it's a little bit easier to approach an athletic administration about changes if you're all on the same page. If everybody's out for themselves, one of the things that we run into is it's like having a Christmas list. Everybody wants something, but nobody wants to sit there and go, this is good for everybody. And because they, they get in their tunnel, and we all get in their tunnel. And I think if we were to take a step back as a coach, a group of coaches, they could probably put together some common things that would make their world better. I mean, we're dealing with it right now with the utility vehicle. Um, you know, one coach wants one, the other coach wants one. They all want one, but they can't get together and get a common idea of one, what do they want? Other than the fact they want one, they don't have an idea of specifications, horsepower, capabilities, any of those things. And they just keep barking at the athletic administration that we want, we want, we want, but they won't give them any details. And if you just come to those folks who are in charge of those things, I think if you have data or you have information in front of you, says this is what we all have talked about, this is what we all think we can use, It'll be effective for multiple teams. You know, as an athletic administration, it's easier to pull a trigger on a purchase if it affects multiple teams, because now you have the ability to defray that cost of a multiple programs, if that's how you do your funding, and it becomes more affordable for everybody. But if one team has to toe the line or one team is insisting on towing the line, that cost can be a lot for one, you know, one group when ultimately probably everybody wants to use it. So find a way to you know, communicate the goals of what you want to do. And the biggest thing that I've run into with ADs recently is budgets. Um, we just had a $200 million shortfall uh, in the Department of Education in Virginia uh, because, of, a, because of, a, of an error. And now all we have a, across the state, we have to eat $200 million of money that was supposedly appropriated for each school division. And so what do you do when your athletic director comes back and says, you know, we just had $50,000 pulled back. What do we do? So you have to really kind of be aware of their budgets, um, you know, and communicate that. You know, I, I'm all about sharing information with my administrators and talking about costs. You know, a good example of not knowing agronomy, but understanding budgets my athletic administrator, when we talk about fertilizers, sometimes he'll look at the, the quote sheet and he'll pick the cheapest bag of fertilizer, not realizing that that may be a 20% or 21% nitrogen source when I could go and get another bag of 44% and cover twice as much ground and only for a little bit more dollars per bag. But he doesn't look at it that way. He looks at the cost of the bag. He assumes a bag's a bag's a bag. And one bag goes as far as the other bag and not realizing the concentration of nutrients in that bag. And that makes a difference if you can explain to them, you know, how that affects you and how much, you know, the types of resources they're using. So budgets are, are a big thing for them. So one of the things that I've been shown this, and this is, this is what happened in my class one day. I asked a student to put the pin in the tractor hitch and put the, the cutter pin or the safety pin in the hitch, in the, in the pin itself. And this is what I got. 
So be effective. Not everyone has experience. And that was my situation where as a kid growing up, I never, ever, ever would have put a pin in the top. But these kids haven't had these experiences. And a lot of people that you work with, I know athletic administration, they haven't had the experience that you have. And that being the case, you need to be a better communicator. If they're not willing to kind of meet you halfway, you better be a really good communicator. And to get the results that you want, you have to be able to communicate. And you have to recognize, too, that often they don't have the experience that you have. And because of that, you know, you preface the conversation with, I know you've never done this before, but let me explain this to you and go from there. Or this is something that I've always done, but I realize you haven't done it before. And if I can answer any questions, please let me know. So being a good teacher provides you an opportunity to have a place at the table, make sure that whatever you're trying to communicate is effective. So yeah, that was a surprise when I got off the track there and saw that. So I had to stop and take a picture. So communication is what we're kind of leading up to it. Uh, have an open dialogue with your administration. You know, uh, I try to, if, if things are going well, I try to include the principal in on it, but you know, many of you don't have a principal to turn to. You have, you know, a, a general manager, you may have a supervisor, you may have, you know, an athletic administrator, uh, whether at the collegiate high school level or wherever it may be, but you need to have a conversation with them and, and keep an open dialogue. The door's always open. Um, it's easier for us to be nice and I think if we extend the olive branch early, I think you can find that if they realize that you you just care about the overall success of the program, um, it's it's easier for them to to feel approachable in, in that respect. Uh, gauge your expectations. I've been in situations where I've had coaches who had zero expectations, zero. And so when that time you did anything, it was awesome. You know, but also you have coaches that have very high expectations and you have to make sure that you do whatever you can to meet those expectations or somehow ground them, you know, ground them in such a way that they can understand, well, we can't get there yet, but here's the steps we have to take in order to achieve what you're trying to achieve. And it's amazing how many times I've got some new coaches that I'm working with now and often they, they look at, well, I have the resources. Well, sometimes you can't buy time and you don't necessarily have, you can't just throw money at it to fix the problem. Sometimes you actually have to fix the problem before you can go about making any big changes. Um, I mean, we're, we're dealing with that right now with our irrigation. You know, we, we brought in some, some people from the manufacturers to say, can you do an audit and tell us why you think we can make this change? And one of the things I'm trying to do is communicate that to our upper divisions of, of our school system to say this, this move is a water savings. It's more so than a financial. You're not going to see the financial gain today, but five years down the road, it will be a water savings that is going to be, you know, you're going to recover those losses from water in a few years. And after that, we'll be in good shape. So trying to give them to understand the big picture, but you really need to gauge their expectations. Um, every conversation is an opportunity to teach or create change. So if you find the time to have a conversation, and it's sometimes it's simple, you know, just how are we doing out here? You know, what's, am I doing, is there anything else I can do to make the team better? Is there something I can do to make your job better? Or is there anything you need me to look up for you? I, I always, before I go to the uh, SFMA concert conference, I always go to my athletic administrator and see if he's got a hit list of things he wants. Does he have a punch list of catalog items that he wants me to get information on? And for years, he talks about he needs sideline tarps. So I make it a point, whether or not he can afford them or not, I speak to at least two or three sideline tarp vendors, and I come back with information. And it's up to him at that point to make a decision. And I'm not going to push him, but if he asks for information, I want him to know that if he asks me to do it, I'm going to gather the information. So I'm trying to do what I can to create change. And all I can do is keep putting those pamphlets in front of them. And maybe today's the day, you know, that he could say, we're going to do this. Um, you know, include them in the solution. You know, if you if you want things to happen, you know, find ways to make the information that they need easier to understand, easier to attain. Um, you know, 
like I said, purchasing the purchasing a utility vehicle, it's it's easy to say I want this, but if you if you know it's got to go to bid, do all of your homework ahead of time to write the bid specifications. That way, all they have to do is submit it to purchasing, and they go through the bid process, and they don't have to go out and gather information. So build a bid sheet for them. Do do the things that you know would make their job easier, so they can move through the process a little faster. Um, because I know at the end of the day, if I don't put it on a spec, a, a, a spec sheet, that I'll get pneumatic tires when I wanted solid tires. I'd get a thin deck versus a thick deck. I won't get a diesel when I wanted a diesel. So if I just put certain loose parameters down, you know, I'm trying to be a part of the solution. And in order for me to gain what I want to gain, I've got to do a little bit of extra work. Um, but we, we all know they're the problem because everybody in our seat feels that way sometimes. But, but how can we get them to realize that they're the problem too. And sometimes it's, it's knowledge. It is truly knowledge or their preconceived notion as to what has been effective for them. When my athletic director came on board, he came from an environment where they rarely used any type of bucket paint. And one of the things that I had been doing a long time before he got here was we had just went all in on a bucket paint type program and we rarely, very rarely use an aerosol product. And in doing so, we cut our costs tremendously. He comes in and his, his idea is we've always done it this way. And so I had to get them to realize cost savings for what we were doing and our type of program. Here's where it's going to be. Here's why we don't do the other. And, you know, once I was able to explain it to him and he realizes really quickly that he was not... Um, as well versed in the paint side of things as he thought he was. We knew the same people in our two schools bought from the same vendor and the same salesperson, but how we went about it was much different than his school went about it. And at the end of the day, he realizes within our system, we can do more with less and it's a more creative way to use our resources and we get more impact. So once they're able to kind of let their guard down a little bit and, 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 and kind of lean on you for good information, that's one less thing they have to worry about. And I think that's where my athletic administrator has really come to appreciate what we do as a sports turf group. Um, you know, how do I, how do I count on that person? I want him not to worry. And I explained to him when he came on board and 16 years of being here at the time when he came on board, we've never not played. And we've never been in a situation where we didn't make the game. So you don't have to worry about this. We got this part handled for you. You worry about the things that truly need to make you have to worry about. And this is not it, you know? So show them that you're a professional and get them to realize really quickly that you just need the resources, you need the tools, and you're there to provide clarity when nobody else will provide clarity. You know, if it's a rainy night and he, he they can't make the decision, help them make a decision. You know, whether it's good you know, to play or not play, but you make you help them make that decision based on your experience. Uh, be genuine, you know, truly care about how they are, you know, be genuine in how you approach them, be genuine in, in your expectations and be genuine in how you think you want to be treated because it's going to have to turn around on you at some point and you want them to give you the same kind of courtesy that you've tried to give them. And it's really hard for them to, uh, you know, to really bite back on you if you've been nothing but supportive. Um, it's a trick I learned, not a you know, trick, but a technique I learned working with parents. You know, if you, you're having a situation in a classroom with a student and you don't know how to handle it, the first thing you do is you ask the parent, how do you deal with this at home? And all of a sudden they are now vested. They have, they have to contribute to success. And if you can provide them you know, you provide yourself an opportunity to maybe go to the athletic administrator and say, tell me how you think we should approach this. And all of a sudden, they have to be part of the solution. And their answer may be, well, that's why I pay you. That's a whole different, that's a, that's a shortcut answer, but you've at least given them the opportunity to have a say-so. And if you can be genuine and keep them, you know, engaged in that respect, I think you, we have found that it's been more successful. Um, the other thing it's hard to do is keep emotion out of the conversation. You know, we spend a lot of time out on our fields and we try to do what we can to make sure our players 
all have the very best, but it's easy to become emotional. And because you, at that point, you feel like you're not valued. You may feel that you're not, you know, taken seriously, you're not being treated professionally. And if that's the case, you maybe take a step back, think about what they may be going through and what decision they are having to make today that you don't have to make. And if that's the case, then find out how can you move forward. But emotion can make things kind of heated. Um, so don't take it personal. You know, at the end of the day, it's not your stadium. It's not their stadium. It's whomever's stadium. But it's more than likely not yours and it's more than likely not theirs. So take it all in and and, and approach it with a little bit open heart. and uh, But keep emotion out of it as much as you can. Um, and try to begin every conversation by asking how things are going. It, it, it shows that you are uh, concerned about whatever's happening on the facility or within the team or within the administration. Um, you know, I, I use the same approach when I approach coaches. It's like, how did you do yesterday? Or who do you have today? Or what time, you know, how are you guys looking for today's game? You know, be, be open, you know, and, and start the conversation about how are, how's the team doing? Um, I never pass up an opportunity uh, when I see an athlete to tell them good luck tonight. Whether we know in our hearts of hearts that they may not do well based on our opponent, you still tell them we want you to do well and just tell them good game tonight, you know, and you know, good luck. And, and that means something to them. And just like with the athletic administrator, they're going through, I, I see what my athletic director has to deal with and I don't want any of it. You know, and our athletic administration, not just athletics, it's activities. So they're dealing with marching band, concert choir, you know, the ballet that's coming in this weekend, a church that may be using our facility in the weekends. They're dealing with sometimes custodians and, and janitorial staff. They're dealing with security. They're dealing with uh, school testing. I mean, it's, it's amazing the amount of stuff they have to deal with. And I'm sure even athletic administrators at the collegiate level and, and the parks and rec level all deal with those types of things. Parent groups, outside users, you know, concert events, all those things play into their world. And you're just one part of it as well. But if you kind of look at it from their perspective, you know, it's it's easier to judge. But if you have to take a moment and look through their lens, it's sometimes it's kind of ugly, some of the world that they have to deal with. And I am, I mean, Twitter is bad enough to see when bad things happen. I couldn't imagine what happens on an athletic director's uh, cell phone line or their you know, text messages because it's pretty ugly. We had a parent um, that I, I know we had a situation at some point where, you know, a parent was concerned whether why we practice in a gym versus moving somebody else off of an area. And, 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 you know, and, and when, it, when it came down to it, is the parent was only concerned about their player and their sport. They weren't concerned about all the things that the athletic director had to deal with. And uh, it, it really put it in perspective for me, you know, sometimes people have unrealistic expectations and, you know, in those situations, you just always lose, you know, unless you can kind of catch them, but typically you can't win. So you have to just chalk it up for experience and, and move forward. So, but be genuine and, and, and be involved, you know, in success, uh, place your ego and your field on the back burner. You know, the same kind of thing we just talked about, your, your emotions, you know, and understand why you do what you do and, and understand your role. And that's hard for us sometimes, too. I know for me, sometimes I want to come up there. And I, my, my students and I both get fired up when the PE class goes out after we've striped the field and they put footprints all through our stripes. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it's one of those things that we just look at it from a perspective of, hey, you know, people are going to be on this field. It's going to happen. I mean, I, I think about this past weekend, you know, all the hard work that sports turf managers, sports field managers do to, to get ready for the Super Bowl. And then you have a concert on your field at halftime. You know, that's just part of it. You know, it's just part of it. You can't undo it. And you you definitely, you know, as a sports field manager, you go, well, I, it would be a whole lot better if that didn't happen. But it's going to happen. And you just have to kind of live with it. Um, so you have to kind of put it all in perspective and take it with a grain of salt. Um, so coaches versus administration, and this is something we've run into quite a bit, and I've, I've tried to work really hard over the last several years to work with our coaches to understand what we try to do. Um, 
you know, and do coaches and administrators communicate? You know, if you speak to the coaches that I know and you speak to the administrators that I know, they communicate in some respects, but a lot of times they don't communicate at all. Um, so, and sometimes they get fed up with each other and there's no communication. So that's really tough too. I mean, you're kind of in between. So, you know, try not, try to listen, um, but also understand that at some point they have to communicate. And if they can't do that, then it's really a struggle. Um, do they have common long-term goals? I spoke about this a little bit ago, but do they have long-term goals? Um, you know, when I look at our athletic facility, it was built in 1991. There's been zero capital improvements on our facility since 1991. And we've been able to manage it and make sure that they're successful and the fields are safe and playable and all those things. But would you like it to be regraded? Absolutely. You know, but it's more than just me. I have to have a group of coaches who feel it's important. And if I can get them to say it's important, maybe that's a long-term goal that we collectively have. You know, same thing with our irrigation system. You know, is it time to be re renovated? It was 20 years ago, but we we have to make priorities and spending and things like that. So you have to say, can I manage to get through? And But if it's a long-term goal for teams, well, then it's a lot easier for us to, to have a common you know, approach to what could be overall better for a facility. So do they communicate those goals with the sports turf manager? And one of the things that I try to do is, you know, reach out. And I, one of the things that we talked about, my athletic administrator and I just talked about last week was, you know, next spring we should have a coaches meeting and I want to be there with the coaches and explain to them our goals when it comes to a, a field management perspective. And then also maybe long-term, what are some facility upgrades that they think are important collectively? You know, um, you know, more so than benches and new, new soccer balls or new footballs or new nets on certain things. It's like, no, no, we, we're talking about facilities, not stuff. You know, I'm talking capital improvements. So those folks often don't know what they, you know, they haven't communicated you know, what they want, or they have told you, but they haven't told anybody else. They haven't told the other coaches that they work with. So, and often, are you the one with the goals? Because I do, I have them. I got a laundry list of things that I'd like to see us improve on. But if, if it's just for me, then, you know, I mean, having a, a quick release, of, I mean, a, a quick connect coupling in certain areas of the field are, for me, easier. But then again, too, is it overall for the entire facility important to have that expense put in maybe maybe not you know so if you have goals then share those too but i would make sure that whatever you do isn't so focused on you know but you may be the only person that has goals the rest of them probably are just hoping to survive today's practice and they get through tomorrow's practice and the next practice and you know so ask yourself am i the one with the goal sometimes i'm the only person that has an idea of what we can do because it's what we do it's as sports field managers we see this every day we see what other people and our colleagues are doing. We're like, we can do that. You know, for us, you know, a good example is we top dress. But none of the other schools around me top dress. Why? Because they don't have the resources. You know, it's not financial resources. I just happen to have a piece of equipment that I was, you know, I bought for a very affordable price. And we've been able to make that small investment to be a very, very effective tool for us. Um, but, you know, top dressing is part of our program. and. It's a, if we can't, if we have to cut out something, we will cut that out. But as a standard goal that we have every year is to have that funded. So, but not everybody has the resources or the knowledge. And if that's something you're trying to help other people, we share that knowledge. Um, so priorities versus priorities. And this is one of the things that I, I, I spoke of a little bit ago for, for coaches and for athletic administration specifically is depending on the situation, some ADs or athletic administrators have a job that encompasses way more than athletics. And I spoke that like my athletic administrator, my activities director, um, his role is like a box of crowns. I mean, it's every color in the box and he's got to do all sorts of things. And I, I am sometimes I, I get frustrated because I'm in my tunnel and I know where I want to go, but having to, to deal with somebody who has so many hats that they have to wear, sometimes it's frustrating, but also you need to say, you know, it's part of what they have to do, and they deal with this every day. You know, in my experience in season is always a crazy time for admins, especially because of weather. And we 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 joked last week at our uh, faculty meeting was the uh, somebody was saying we need a snow day, and the and the 
administrator, the, the athletic administration said, you had from uh, from December 1st until February 14th to have your snow day. Because next week we start spring sports and no more snow events after spring sports starts because that means he's going to have to move practices. He's going to have to change buses, officials. I mean, just it's a, everybody's fighting over the same spot in the gym every minute of the day because of a weather event. Um, so those folks deal with a lot and a lot of it centers around a schedule. You know, where does, do you have a hole in your calendar to make that make up a date? Um, so, you know, look at their schedules. They deal with conflict. They deal with parent conflict. They deal with team conflict, coaches. I mean, the amount of information that I, I mean, I, even as a coach, I can tell you that the number of conflicts you deal with with parents because they are only in, they they truly believe in the well being of their child, and I totally understand that. But they also don't understand it from the other side. They don't the, the well being of their child is important, but the well being of another child is not so not as important. Um, so with administration, they have to listen to all of that, and you know sometimes they have to take it on the chin just to let the person vent and say what they want to say. And at the end of the day, they're probably not going to yield to too to too much to that parent or to whomever the, the person who's creating the conflict, but at least they still have to listen to it and, you know, and they still have to deal with it. So it, it's one of those things that I don't look forward to. I, I know as a, as a coach and a, as a teacher, I don't look forward to that type of conflict with anybody because it just makes your day worse. Um, if you can find ways to avoid it, not by ignoring it, but just dealing with it and find a way to effectively deal with it. But, you know, athletic administrators have to do it all the time. Uh, they have to deal with coaches. They have to deal with people like you and I who have expectations. We need needs and we 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 need to be heard. And if we are not heard, then we get upset. So they have to listen and they have to provide some sort of feedback. So their priorities are much different than ours. My priorities as a sports field manager is get the game field ready, uh, make sure practice areas are safe and playable, and then make sure every coach has what they need from a field standpoint that they they need to have in order to either carry out a practice or have a game. But at the end of the day, I can't tell you if we're going to play tonight. That's not my call. Um, my call is to give, my job is to give feedback and provide information so my athletic administrator can make some choices and make some decisions that are well above my responsibility. Um, you know, so it's, they, they get paid to make those tougher choices, but I want to have a place at the table and and provide my information that way maybe my information will either you know save work for me or prevent somebody from getting injured uh, or, or something like that um, and then also they have to deal with budgets and in the world that we live in today i think there's never enough budget and there's always money we need to spend on things um you know our our, our wants is often and our needs and our you know our needs and wants are two different things and often our want list is different than our needs list and but we want everything we can possibly get and we're all fighting over a piece of pie that everybody else is fighting over as well so as a person who has to make that hard decision of yes and no uh, that's that's a tough one as well um, I've, I've run in situations where people say we don't have really a budget you just tell me what you need and We'll work to do that. And then we have people who say we have rigid budgets. And it all depends on how your administration manages their stuff. I mean, they their their resources are, are sometimes fluid. Uh, sometimes they're not. Sometimes people are by the book. Some people are, hey, you helped us out over here. We can probably scratch a little money together. So it all depends on how they deal with their budgets. But I think that's a challenge, too, for a lot of people. Some people want to know how much money do I have. Other people don't know, but they've never been told no. Um, you know, so it all depends on how you deal with those priorities. Um, you know, we often are sports team, sports and team focused or field focused. Um, admins are team and sports focused as well, but they also have other considerations, transportation, weather delays, cancellations, rescheduling. Um, and the hardest one for a lot of folks, and I think we as sports field managers kind of look at this way is, the good of the many outweigh the good of the few, and but coaches don't look at it that way. Um, you know, coaches often are looking at what happens and impacts their sport today. Um, and I deal with that a lot in the fall. Um, sometimes you, you run into a situation where we got to play a game Friday night because we don't want to be in a struggle next week. 
because our turnaround time was so tight. But we have other coaches that are just like, you know, we can make this game up or we can not. It's just as good for us not to play as it is for us to play. Um, so making a decision, you know, at the moment potentially could, you know, cause long-term damage. We, we, we were set to host an event last spring and it was a big deal, you know, very high profile kind of event. And we were all looking forward to it because it was going to be good PR. It was going to be really good for our, our, our administration, good for our programs. But the event was supposed to happen on a Saturday night, and we had a humdinger of a rain all day on Saturday during the day. And first thing they had to do was call up that that group, that user group, and say, you know, we'd love to have you, but in our situation, if we put you on it tonight, we're going to ruin our field for the next four weeks. And so we decided to not play it and not have the event. And although disappointing, it was the right decision. And it was the probably overall it, it benefited us because we still got the PR out of it, but we didn't have to host the event. And but we also extended an olive branch to a program that probably was looking for some help. And we we were willing to help them and, and, and do some good things. And but in the end, we didn't play it because impact of our athletes. And they didn't, and, and looking back, that user group said, we didn't want to ruin your facility either. So it worked out really well. So the good of the many outweigh the good of the few, and, and that's really tough. And uh, like I said, it's not a place, popular place to be and often the most stressful part for a lot of administrators. And then educate, you know, keep the core in your loop of info, uh, you know, keep that core group of people in your loop uh, informed. Administrators, coaches, your workers uh, can often be some of the best people to defer problems from people who may be out there. I, during the COVID era, when we were having a lot of non-sanctioned use of our athletic facilities, you know, one of the things that I did was I just spoke to people and explained to them why our areas were closed off, you know, explained to them who we were and what we did. And it created a good conversation um, with folks. And you know, they, were, they weren't doing anything intentionally wrong. They were just out, they wanted to get outside in the sunshine and I couldn't blame them, but also wanted them to understand our perspective of we're trying to manage a facility because we are hoping that we're going to open our doors in the fall. And if we are, we need to have these fields in top shape. And um, they were they were receptive to that. And they, they were really, it was really interesting that the conversations that came about, it was often they didn't realize that schools did what they did. Um, in, in that situation. So those folks, you know, your people on the ground floor essentially can be the people that answer the most questions. So, but having the, everybody else in the loop, the administrators should never have the answer, you know, be approached about a topic that has to do with your fields and the answer be, I don't know. And because then at some point you haven't communicated. Our coaches should be in the know. If something is happening, I, I messed up one year, I had a state semifinal soccer game the next day. And just not even thinking, we aerated the field uh, the day before their practice. And I ruined their opportunity. I, I, I didn't ruin their opportunity. I ruined their field for them because we were just, it was our scheduled air raid and we didn't think about their practice. So we had to move them to an alternative surface. It didn't, it didn't make a difference in the game. But still, it was one of those things. I did not communicate our aeration plan with the coach. And that was my failure as a communicator. I didn't have a chance to really, you know, talk and tell them what we were going to do. So I didn't keep everybody in the loop. So, I mean, these are things that we see. And, and one of the things that I've tried to alleviate is, you know, we, we've all done this now. We all have a cell phone. It's a great way to record uh, things that you may be dealing with, stresses especially. Um, we have a drone and I have, you know, I've worked with our, uh, lacrosse coaches to work on traffic management. And one of the things that they've all said is part, paint some more sectors on the field. And when I painted more spots, I've expected them to get used. But if you look at the image, this field part is getting used and this part is getting used, but this goal hasn't been used yet. And this goal hasn't been used yet. So, you know, one of the things is when you try to you call them out a little bit, but be productive, have data, show them things. But like I said before, you have to help coaches learn how to coach again. Um, so and one of the things I do with the athletic administrator is like bring them ideas. So don't make it come from me, make it come from you. And 
you know, have expectations for them as coaches to be innovative, have them, you know, expectations for them as coaches to be, you know, kind of different and cutting edge and do things differently than the other people have done. Um, so provide practice ideas, you know, find alternative markings, um, you know, innovate new technology. I mean, coming back from the, uh, the conference in, in Salt Lake City, if you don't come back with new ideas, then whoo, you're, you haven't been paying attention because there's so many cool new technologies that are out there um, that at least you can bring it up and say, look, let me tell you what they're doing. This is something innovative. I mean, when, when robotic painters came out and everybody's talking about them now, I mean, how many facilities have them? Um, and if you'd have told me that 20, you know, 15 years ago when I was you know, still young and, and then all this, I would be like, no, that's just, that'll never happen. And, you know, now it's, it's part of the standard. You know, so those new technologies that we thought of 10 years ago are just commonplace now. And the new technologies we see at new events are, are going to be commonplace 10 years from now. So, um, but being innovative, you know, I try to get our coaches to think about things differently. Athletic administrators think about things differently. So, but, um, you know, it's just one of those things that I think if you, uh, you know, start to approach, you know, folks with a uh, open mind, it, it definitely makes things more constructive. Uh, I try to keep accurate records. This is something that everybody can say that you're uh, not uh, on board if you can't uh, show them, you know, here's the detailed plan, what's going on, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and then have a calendar and share that calendar with everybody who needs to be shared with. And then buy in, use yourself buy in, okay? Um, you know, try to get coaches to understand your plan, show them results, use industry contacts for support. Can't tell you the number of times that we have, you know, reached out to people that we know in the industry that are, um, you know, on the cutting edge of, of cool things. Um, and so um, it's really neat to see their perspective when you come in and you say there's a, like my baseball coach, if I can make a reference to a professional baseball facility that I know the, the, the field superintendent at, it definitely makes a difference to that person that I'm using. You know, I'm talking about people that they see on TV or the facilities they see on TV. Um, you know, build a plan and commit to the plan and share that plan. Make them a part of the solution. Okay, give athletic directors an opportunity or a coach for them to say no when you have all this other, you know, nothing we're doing is about their success. Um, so um, it's just really, uh, you know, really full tilt of how you can get them to buy in, um, you know, especially when their overall success is at value. And then some things that we talk about all the time here on campus is, you know, aeration, make sure we're doing everything we can, some tricks and things that we do to show coaches that anybody can do this. It's simple. Um, you know, we talk about top dressing, we talk about wedding agents, we talk about cultivar selection. It was, we have Tahoma 31 on our practice facility, and I, I laughed and I shared with my students today in class was, you know, they said on the TV and everything, it's experimental. And I'm like, we've had it for two years, how experimental is it? But, you know, we as sports turf managers, it's not the first time we've seen Tahoma 31, but on TV, it was talked about a lot, and it was really kind of exciting. We, we put it out on Twitter the other day. You know, you think the NFL's, you know, field is innovative. We've had that field for two years, you know, so it's, but if you can showcase the new and cutting edge varieties, you know, or new, just new technology and showcase it in your facility, just in some small part to show that you're trying to be different. It's hard for, and it's, it's also so you're easier to sway an administrator if you can show results on your facility. Um, so here's us. We had to cut out some some sod areas, and the kids really worked hard on it. And we dropped in some grass, and you know, what, basically, what I'm leading to with this is, you know, tell the coaches you're going to do some improvements, then show up, deliver, uh, do what you say you're going to do. Okay, don't be afraid to be bold. Um, you know, it's I've learned in my life now that it's one thing to say you're going to do it, but the other part is actually doing it and completing the task. And if you can. Make sure that people who count on you to do what you do every day, if an athletic administrator knows that you said, we're going to do it, and they turn their back and it's done, 
it's really tough for them to walk away and say no to you again when you you have done nothing but follow through and done what you've asked them to do. Um, so that's that's the big thing for me. Um, you know, and it's a team approach. You know, by, by, when by using a team approach, make it a team solution. Thank them. Thank the coaches, players, administration, your staff. Make them understand that you're appreciative, and if when something goes well, you know, you thank them. If things things don't go as you expected, still thank them for giving you an opportunity, and then also, you know, offer new solutions because we're all learning. You know, sports field management is like a Rubik's cube. We get one side figured out, and we mess up the other side, and we're constantly trying to solve it and solve it and solve it. And um, you know, there's there's no taking this thing apart and putting it back together. We got to keep fixing it. So it's it's constantly changing. And uh, so do the unexpected. I'll, I'll finish up with this part. I always like to do this. Um, you know, the, do things that people don't expect you to do. Um, surprise people. You can do things and don't tell anybody you're going to do it. And people show up and they see things that you've done to your facility. I'm saying like, you know, for game facilities, anytime you have an opportunity to surprise somebody and sneak up on them with something cool and innovative, then do it. Um, but give credit to the ones above um, for your support. So I always am quick to thank my athletic administration, my principal, uh, because they're the ones who made the resources available. Uh, they may not have the idea, but they were part of it, whether they knew it or not. Um, so, you know, we, we do, like I said, the Stars and Stripes stuff has been cool for us. We don't ask permission. We just show up and we do crazy stuff. But we give people, you know, cool things to see and things to do. So. Um, with that, I'm open to questions, um, and I appreciate your time. I don't think I'm right at it. So, but thank you. I'll stop my share. Oh, well, you can leave it up because your okay. contact information is there. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and enter those into that Q&A feature. Otherwise, you can reach out to Mark. Uh, there's his contact information, email, and phone number. So it doesn't look like we have any questions. So thank you, Mark. I appreciate your uh, time. Yeah, thank you all for joining us. We have one more week of education, um, only one session next Tuesday. So make sure to register and join us. Um, Joseph said thank you again. So thank you, Joseph, for joining us. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of the week.